Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in our C programming language series. In today's lesson, we're going to continue talking about data types. Now, throughout this series, if you've been watching, we've talked about different types of data. Things like the primitive types like int, char, float, and so on in the C programming language. We've also talked about aggregating types together in things like struct to create our own data type. And more recently, we've talked about type defs, which were a way to create an alias for some other known type. But what I want to talk about is actually revisiting some of the primitive types like integers. Because you see, I stumbled upon this during this lesson to create uh, a table of the different integer types and their ranges. So let's go ahead and take a look here. And this is a figure from the crazy programmer here, which matches closely my assumptions here. So what I've got here are these various types here, the sign type, unsigned, short, and so on. Now, what's interesting here is also seeing how many bytes each of these types take here. So for instance, a float is four bytes here, a short int is two, a long appears to be four here, and a signed uh, char is one. Now, some of these meet my assumptions, but I had thought a long might have been eight bytes. So I'm going to go ahead and click through a few of these videos, and let's see if this matches our assumption. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this image here from Fastbit. And it says an int is 16 bits and a long is 32 bytes. Hmm. Oh, wait, this is for some microcontroller or something. Let's click around here and see if we can have some consensus. Here an int is 2 bytes. Um, OK, interesting. If I click on this one, well, a int is 4 bytes here. Hmm. OK, so let's go ahead and take this to our terminal here and see if we can sort this out. Now, of course, one of the tools that we have here that we can use is size up. So let's just go ahead and figure this out. Print f int, or let's go ahead and write out size of our int equals, and this is usually some sort of long unsigned uh, value here. And let's just do size of int here. This is how I always tell folks that they can sort of practice uh, programming here uh, by figuring out the sizes themselves and building this table here. So let's turn on warnings here, see if I make any silly mistakes here. Compile our program, looks like it's working. And okay, it looks like it's four bytes for an integer, at least on my machine. And that's sort of the key takeaway from this lesson. So if I go ahead and revisit this chart here, the int can have a different value depending on the different architecture that you have. So again, on some of these websites here, uh, like let's see, Fastbit, or I think this one here, uh, this was a good example of 16 bits or only two bytes for integers, but that is on a microcontroller. So if you're doing embedded development, say maybe on a Raspberry Pi or some piece of equipment, maybe it's part of a car or something, you can have different sizes for your integers. Now, why is this a problem? Well, I'm going to go ahead and visit another link here, which goes through the limits of our data type, meaning based off of the width or how many bytes they are, and their uh, maximum ranges here. So let's go ahead and just run this code here and see the type of values that we get showing, for instance, for a short, the minimum value, and the large value here. And same for an integer. Now again, this is for a four byte integer, what I'm assuming here, or I know this here. But again, if we're on an embedded architecture, our limits might only actually be up to 32,000 for an integer. So that can be very problematic. So that's the whole point of this lesson. How do we know or how can we control this if we're using the C programming language and we want to make sure an int stores four bytes of information so it can store a range such as this here. So what we do have in the C programming language is something known as a fixed width type. And with this, you can actually specify how many bits your type is. And most of us are expecting, if you're just doing desktop development and probably just learning C for the first time, that it's four bytes on a system today in this, uh, you know, 2023. So you can use an int 32 underscore T, which is a reserve type in the C programming language that will make sure that this is exactly four bytes. And let's go ahead and try this out here. So let's go ahead and we need to include standard int. So this gives us fixed width types. OK, uh, let's go ahead and type that out. There we are. And let's go ahead and see what the results are here. So let's go ahead and try that. And again, just to see the name here, int 
32. And then remember, underscore T is how we end types in the C programming language uh, when they are part of the language here. Okay, so let's try a few of these here, uh, such as this, 32 underscore T and 16 underscore T here. Okay, so now my expectation should be if this is 32 bits, that'll be four bytes. If this is 16 bits, two bytes will be printed out here. So I'll compile it, compiles just fine. And we have this. So what I recommend is if you're writing an application that is going to be running on say an embedded device that you do use these fix with types. In fact, I would generally encourage folks to use this. I think it's clear. Again, it's part of the type here. So you know what the size, it's probably a good idea. So let me just go ahead and write a few more of these out here. Again, we have uh, int 8t for one byte uh, that we can use as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and just show that that is again one byte here of information. So let's see, what else do we have here? Now there are some other different uh, types here like this int fast uh, 8t, which let's see if we can find some information about it here, um, which I believe might be using some different shortcuts um, that are sort of architecture dependent. Um, so again, if you get in the embedded world, you might consider uh, these particular types. And it usually they have to do with, again, I'm not an expert on this uh, particular type here, uh, but the sort of register size that might be used in architecture. So there might be some selections that can be done here. But in general, I'd recommend, you know, these are good to know about for the purpose of this lesson here. All right. Uh, and then you have other things like the uh, maximum width here that you can query and so on. So I think I have um, a few different types there. Now, as a bonus here, uh, and we could go ahead and see here's the example, there is another type that you often want in the C programming language that we haven't seen. It is available in C++ or most other modern languages, but it is the standard bool here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on it here. And sometimes we just want a true or false value. So I thought that would be interesting to tag into this video here uh, as well. Uh, just because it's not part of the language, but you can see a little pattern here, standard bool here gives us a bool value. And let's just go ahead and uh, print it out here, size of uh, bool. And let's line up these equal signs here. Percent LU, let's see size of bool here. And let's see how many bytes that is. And it is in fact one byte for true or false here. Now, technically you could make a data structure and just use one bit, or if you have a series of bools, pack them into uh, integers if you want, which is a great exercise. But I also wanted to show you that that is available. So now that we can do things like if uh, true, uh, let's just go ahead and print off condition is true. Okay, so it's not exactly exciting, but if folks ask you, does C have a bool variable? It doesn't have one that's built in, but this is effectively a macro that expands out to a one or a zero value. So to wrap this up, folks, we have different widths for our integers that we can make use of. And again, this will help make your code a little bit more uh, perform, or I should say it should perform in a more consistent way, regardless of the architecture, if you need to know that exactly you have this range of numbers that you need to represent, which is probably often the case that you might want to do something like this if you're building applications that must run on a variety of architectures. And the other thing that we covered in this lesson, again, is just that we have this type here for bool so that we can just use true or false if that makes our code more readable, or maybe if we're mixing it with, say, C++ or something, we just want a more consistent way to use bools rather than always using uh, values of zero or one for true and false. All right, folks, so with that said, I'll go ahead and point you to my website if you want to go ahead and uh, track your progress. It's free to sign up, courses.mshot.io, so you can go ahead and follow along with the lessons there and see which ones you've completed. And as always, thanks for your help uh, and support throughout this series. I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one, and feel free to engage in the comments below if you have any questions about these new types that you've learned about.